Welcome back to uh, creating a cyborg girl part uh, seven, I believe this is. And uh, what we have here, I want to share with you some techniques uh, as I'm basically adding uh, more detail to this uh, cyborg leg here. One is using the uh, the mixer brush. If you go down here and hold the mouse down, go down to mixer brush tool. I like the uh, the dry light load to mix, and basically. Uh, this is once I've applied and merged all my layers down and some textures, I can um, blend some of these textures together and some of these values. So for example, um, let me find an area here. Maybe around here where this uh, circle, there's a lot of uh, strokes sort of leading out and maybe I want to blend some of this. Um, this is a great tool and uh, it works best with pressure sensitivity. So um, again, having your brush settings set to uh, shape dynamics and transfer. Um, and I'm just using a standard chalk brush, but um, by doing this, it just unifies the surface a little bit, and you can, you know, reduce the size of your brush and just blend off a little bit. Um, I don't think everything should be smooth and, you know, perfectly um, uh, blended, but at the same time, uh, you don't want everything all choppy either uh, with the brush strokes. You want uh, lots of variety. So by using this tool, uh, effectively, you can do that. The other thing I want to point out was using the selection tools. So you may have noticed that certain areas here are definitely sharper and a little cleaner looking. Um, so on this layer here, what I've done is, um, if I turn on and off, you can see it's just all one layer now. You can use things like the lasso tool. I use the uh, polygonal lasso tool. If you hold the mouse down on it and go down to uh, polygonal lasso tool, it's the second tool there. Um, you can definitely clean things up pretty easy. So let me demonstrate this. So I can click and just basically like a, almost like a pin tool, you just click, click, click to create different points. And uh, this is this is just a really great tool. I use this a lot along with the regular lasso tool for more organic stuff. But for hard edge material stuff, this is a great tool. And um, maybe I'll just end uh, something like this. And I just double click. And um, what I've done here is I just realized uh, I knocked off part of it, so let me keep going around here just one more time. Sometimes that happens where you um, click and it overlaps itself, so you just got to be aware of that. So maybe I'll have something like this, and I just got to make sure I click out and then double click. You can just press enter. You don't have to actually connect the dots uh, to make this tool active. But now I can hit the eraser tool and use whatever brush I want and come back and literally it'll sharpen up all those areas. Now if I want to fill in some of these areas uh, with a paintbrush I can go select inverse and then uh, hit my brush tool and then as I paint in these areas it'll sort of fill in that silhouette also. So um, yeah and that can give you kind of cool sharp areas. If I hit control D to D select you can kind of see that happening. Now, if you leave it flat like that, it's definitely not going to look very interesting. So you definitely have to, you know, build up your lights and your darks and your form. I'm sort of having my light coming from the left here, which is, if we zoom out here, it's sort of from the top uh, for the figure. You know, um, thinking of the sky, like sort of light coming back. But you can see how much cleaner that looks, and um, you know, you can definitely have lots of fun kind of working with that. Um, I did it also with the ellipse tool here. So let me show you that. If I click and drag on ellipse, if I hold shift key, it locks it into a circle. And then if I hold space bar, I can reposition it wherever I want. And then uh, release and then keep uh, dragging it out. So I can use this as a border. And then um, I can do an inverse, select inverse, which you mean the, st the stuff inside is protected. But what that allows me to do is create a really cool edge. So let me go back to my regular brush. And I'll select uh, this lighter shade here. And as I paint along here, you'll see uh, what will happen is it'll it'll remember that edge there. You'll basically clean that up and give it a nice crisp circular uh, shape. So this is really good, uh, especially for anything elliptical. But there's the rectangular marquee selection tool in there too. Sometimes I'll use that. Um, but often what I use is instead of that is the uh, rectangle lasso tool. I'm sorry, the polygonal lasso tool. Um, yeah, that's pretty much, uh, those are the kind of tools I like to use. So if I hit Control D, you can see how it's just a little crisper there. Now I could have, um, let me undo that action. I can inverse the selection again, select inverse, 
And this time, uh, select a darker shade by holding down Alt and kind of increase that, that circular quality by just kind of painting on the inside here. So you never have to be like the most perfect draftsman in terms of creating circles. Circles are really hard to do by freehand. Um, that's why we have all these cool tools to help you out. Uh, they're all vector based so you could feather the selection if you want a softer edge but I like the the crispness for this. So you can see here um, and if I need to soften I can go over a little bit but look how much cooler that is having a couple of uh, you know nice little circles there. So um, yeah some little extra techniques here. Sorry about the buzzing sound that's when I zoom out. Um, we'll see you next time in uh, Photoshop CS6. Hopefully this will be a little bit further along uh, with the leg, it's getting close. Uh, we're almost there. You know, I would say this is 78% um, eh, done. You know, I'm definitely liking the major sections here. I might add um, some smaller details and definitely work on the lighting and the, the shading. But overall, I like the textures uh, and the overall forms. So see you soon.